Thanks, everybody. And we're live. We're live on Roger Rails live streaming video. Two videos, two videos. All right. All right. How's everybody doing today? Good, 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 good. Happy New Year. And uh, my name is Derek Maribond, CEO of Intenix Digital Marketing. Next to me is Stacy Collick of Dollar Bill Digital Printing. And um, we're kicking off LA2M today. Uh, most of you probably know, because I see a lot of regulars out there, that Elliot's Home is a 501c3 nonprofit. Stacy just happens to be our treasurer, along with the reader at the front door and many other things. Um, and we pass the hat, so we feel free to throw a couple bucks in the hat if you'd like. And um, yeah, thank you, Stacy. And we use that to cover expenses and fund our organization. It's completely true. It's a volunteer organization, we all volunteer, everything we do. Uh, nobody really gets paid for this including our speakers who volunteered their time to come out. So, how many of you guys were at uh, Charlie and Terry's uh, goal setting thing last week? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, that was a pretty special treat. And, uh, I don't know, it's, it's been a good 2012 so far, I think. And so today, um, oh, quick question. Is there anyone here who's brand new, first time to LA2M? Any first timers? One? Just one? Okay, we have one first timer. Let's make sure to welcome him. O'Brien! Oh, Hi! Hey, hey, Derek Merrill, how are you doing? Hi. <laughs> You're going to speak at LA Twin. Come out soon, right? Okay. Yeah, Brian's going to speak. This is Brian Beecher from ICPSR. He's speaking on cloud computing in a few weeks, which is going to be really interesting. Uh, talking about the cloud. So, well, good. Thanks for coming. It's good to always scout. you got to scout the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Anyone else who's new, uh, make sure you join us on LinkedIn, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You can check in on Foursquare right here at LA2M. Uh, you can just check in at LA2M on Foursquare, please do that. Carter is the mayor, our photographer Carter is the mayor, so see if you can oust him. And uh, yeah, thanks to uh, all of you who post things on social media. You posted something today, right? Thank you very much on Facebook and tagged us. And uh, also thanks to our sponsor. Dr. Thomas Blackwell is our sponsor. He's not here today, but he's a great, um, he's like a, he's a therapist, he's a motivational guy, he's a sports guy, and he's our sponsor this month. So you can sponsor LA2M for 200 bucks for the whole month. Uh, you get a banner on our newsletter, which goes out to 1,700 people, and you get mentioned at the events. And whatnot. Okay, so without further ado, uh, our speaker today is a Spartan. Which you know I'm happy about. Any of the Spartans out there in the crowd? A few of you? Okay, yeah, go state. How about the Outback Bowl? That was exciting. And uh, yeah, go Michigan too. We, we support Michigan teams as well because they're local. And, uh, but anyways, so Paul Jack came down from MSC. Thank you. He was actually supposed to speak last year, but we happened to have a big snowstorm the night before he spoke. So I believe, uh, I believe I covered 40, which worked out okay. But anyways, Paul's going to talk about internships. He is really kind of the lead on all internships at Michigan State University working with career services. And so we're going to learn the how and whys of internships and uh, hopefully to help you with your business and getting interns. How many of you actually are interns or use interns at your business? Okay. Good. Okay, good. A lot of you. Most of you. Good, good, good. Well, then listen up and let's give Paul Jack a round of applause to welcome him to LA Twin. Thank you. You guys hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, well, thanks, Derek. Um, you're right. Uh, MSU internships, that's, that's what I do. Um, and I put this up here, connecting MSU uh, and others. Because as Derek said, I promote with others. Obviously, I work for MSU. They're the ones who pay my bill. But um, I'm promoting the state of Michigan. So for example, if a, a company uh, is next to Open University, they say, you know what, we love to get Michigan State grad. I'm like, you know, Oakland's right in your back door. I have great connections there. Why don't you work with them? And, but I do try to get them connections at Michigan State also. But we keep pushing it out. Um, and I do work nationwide, worldwide. Um, and I'll tell you in, in the next slide a little bit about um, my position. Um, I'm a kid at heart. That's me on a slide. We have an incubator right in Lansing that has a huge slide in the middle of it. So um, love doing that along with my two kids. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at MSU Interns. Um, with my position, I'm the internship developer. 
that is the, I'm the only one uh, on campus if, uh, uh, and servicing about 48,000 uh, undergrads. So there's always something to do. We want 68 internship coordinators on campus. Those are the people that uh, pretty much are students advisors. They give the students credit. I don't work with uh, too much credit. Um, I do answer some questions, but my job is to develop. So I'm meeting with you, I'm meeting with the businesses, trying to find out what type of internships you're offering, your questions, your needs, expanding that, and connecting that with students, if that makes sense. So I'm working on the business side and the, the student side. The real quick and easy, when, when people call me up, they send me an email, say they have a position, some of them just want to come to me and just post the position on our main website. Our main website, see here, is myspartancareer.com. That goes right out to all the students. You can get as specific as you want, as, as grade level, as major. Um, I help you with that. So a lot of times, if I don't know, I'll get some people that will call and say, I posted a position 30 days ago. I got zero responses. Can you help me out? And I usually tell them, I say, one thing is, you didn't tell me. Because if you, if you tell me, then I can also get it out to students faculty, staff, and then also the show I can also get it out on social media, where I have a lot of uh, students and, and alums following me. Um, also making it unique, some of these, uh, some people will, will post positions and the title is just intern. A lot of students really don't just search for a, a glamorous position just called intern. So um, I try to show them how to, how to do that, make the position fun, exciting, and then get things going. And I love our old logo. That's why I threw that up. <laughs> Same with social media. Um, it's interesting, and hopefully um, many of you are getting on that. Uh, the main three, obviously, I push Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, others I can get into. But we, uh, I co taught a class last semester with our associate dean of Commerce called Social Media for Business. Brand new class uh, that we did. We had 68 students sign up, and it was amazing. <coughs> Uh, as Derek knows too, he, he teaches the new media driver's license class. Um, many students are interested in social media. They're just not sure about it, especially on Twitter and LinkedIn. So the neat thing is we're seeing a lot of businesses post jobs. And they're doing it in a unique way. A couple examples is uh, Moose Job, which I know is one right across the street, was one that was promoting positions um, so I had some students apply right through Twitter, direct messaging on there. They were asking people, first off, don't send your resume, let us know your favorite kind of hair gel. If anybody knows Moose Jaw, they're a, they're a unique company. Um, people are using unique ways to find uh, uh, students out there. So uh, that's what I want to push to you guys. You know, just don't do the, the normal positions, but try to be unique with the, the positions. Um, our Career Services Network, we have about 48 individuals that work uh, for Career Services, which is pretty large uh, for a university. We are a bigger university. Along with U of L, they have a similar number. We have some smaller colleges and universities that only have about two or three that work for Career Services. And when I say our network, what I do is, again, I'm the only internship developer for the university, but we have individuals in each college. So we'll have an individual in communication arts and sciences, we'll have someone in arts and letters, we'll have somebody in engineering. So if a position comes into me, I can kind of be the, that liaison and get it out to, to all of them. So we have this great network. Uh, real quick, I want to show you if it works, if it doesn't see, I just want to show you a short video, a couple minute video, of some things that we're doing for some of our employers and for some of our students. Again, trying to be unique. So hope you like this. Some of the students help us put this together also. Some of these people you see are some of our alums. We're going around recording some of our alums, some aren't. We try that to do as much as we can with that. Thank you. 
That's what I asked. <laughs> the guy who actually did that, who took off, he's our video guy that did that, so I'll bet. Because <laughs> I said, I want to fly in a video. <laughs> We have some interns that have turned into interns turning into alums. So, interesting story. This is one place to go. Interesting story was uh, one with Nestle that was in there. When we push the students, we want them to get this experience. We want them to find out: do you want to do this for the rest of your life or not? Find out some things that you don't like to do. So, some of them went into Nestle uh, looking at. I don't know if you know that they make hot pockets. They have the uh, they have the hot pockets uh, line. And we have a full video of all the Hot Pockets, but some of them were a little turned off by how they're, they're actually made. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm not getting into anything like that, so you'll have to search that video for yourself. But a lot of the, the process tools are made in, in a similar way. But I mean, as you can see, I just wanted to show this example. Is instead of the traditional regular PowerPoint or, or regular video, we're trying to get unique. And instead of just doing stuff, we're also asking the students, help us out. Um, along with the the, uh, the alums. Now it says Lear there. Lear is part of our, that's our business school. Just to, just so you know. And that's part of our career services network. But uh, I just thought it was a really cool video. Now we have a series uh, under My Spartan Career. We have a series uh, on YouTube. That's probably 50 to 100 videos that we keep pushing and pushing. So feel free to follow that. Where, where did the uh, Union Pacific people <coughs> Uh, come in because they they have a presence in Michigan. No, they uh, they, they actually the, the team that goes out and does this video will do videos all throughout the country. Yep, mm -hmm. we uh, we reach out to our alums. And it's it's funny that um, when you discover some of these these alums that we have, not just at Michigan State but all over in Michigan, um, a couple of throughout there is and, and Eric by knows too is we have an alum who's one of the presidents of the Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know that? Anybody watch the Discovery Channel? I'm, I'm addicted to it. Very end of it, it says W. Clark Bunting. He's our alum. Uh, I work with him every year. He comes in and introduces five students in my office every year. Um, but there's some interesting ones out there. So yeah, when you say that, you're like, there's no presence here. But they go out and do the videos. A, a little shameless plug that I'll do. I'm pretty proud of it. I started an app. If any app users out there for iPhone and Droid. So when you post a position on Mike's Parking Gear, which is free, I don't have to run it up. When you post a position out there, um, I've made an app that actually, when you post it, it goes to their phones. We're trying to get to the students because a lot of students, I mean, if any, any of you have kids, if you talk to the students, they're not going to the websites. They're not doing what you say. So if they don't, let's get them where they are. They're all on their phones. They're all texting. They're all sending stuff. So right away, free app called My Spartan. Um, it's not totally perfected yet, but you'll see on there that um, there's about a thousand jobs posted on there, and actually a lot of the students can actually apply right from their phones. We also throw workshops, career events. Um, we have seven uh, social feeds on Twitter that they can follow. Um, and I'm actually sharing with this with other universities and businesses because they want to replicate it. So um, I'm happy to show any of you that too. And any suggestions would be great. This is kind of new to us. And it took us forever to get that logo approved. That was tough. If anybody's worked with the university. So, big question. I know some of you asked out there. With internships, paid, unpaid, stipend, what do you do? Um, I am seeing a lot of unpaid internships. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, I don't answer any legal questions. I am not a lawyer at all. There are legalities, and I'll show you the, the criteria um, that the uh, that the government has out there. When we meet with the students, the number one thing you probably know when I say to a student, so would you like paid or unpaid? Every one of them say, I would like paid, but I would be willing to take an unpaid. So um, a lot of these students are just looking for that experience. The thing is, is in the media, this is not new. Unpaid internships have been around forever. Um, it's a little more immediate, more apparent in the media just because of the way the economy is. So people are taking pretty big advantage of unpaid interns. And again, I'll, I'll show you the criteria. 
But um, as I was saying, there's a big difference between an unpaid intern and a temporary worker. And I always push this. I had a manufacturing company ask me. I had a student that was shoveling snow, and he was mad because he was interning and he was shoveling snow. And I said, is that the only thing that he did? He said, no. I said, well, that's fine. If he was doing something that was practical work towards his major, that's fine. As an intern, he should still be grabbing coffee. He should still be copying. He should still be shoveling snow. But he needs to do practical work. Now, if you hired him to shovel snow, that's a town. If that makes sense. Stipend, if anybody knows, I'll throw that in stipend. I've seen uh, a lot of businesses with, with posting creative jobs are also putting out uh, creative ways to pay students. If you know it or not, you don't have to pay the students an hourly wage. You can pay them a per project basis. So uh, if you get a student comes in and it's a, it's a couple month project, let them know, um, I would like to pay you this chunk of money at the end of it. I would like to pay you in a minor gift card. I would like to pay you in gas card. So I'm seeing a lot of that happen. So unpaid interns, which is probably bigger. I'm not going to read all these. And you can find these if you just type and search the six main criteria, U.S. government. I always say it's kind of a probable cause thing. A lot of these businesses can get around a lot of this stuff as long as they're putting stuff pertaining uh, towards their major um, that they can do. But here's the, some of the criteria of the training. You know, it includes actual operation of employers' facilities. It's similar to training that would be given to a vocational school. You see some of these, and the wording is OK. But again, they need to have practical experience. The four credit question. Uh, a lot of businesses ask, can I qualify? For, for students to get credit? I would say there's a, there's a qualification, and here's my, my quick answer to that is, there's nothing that you really need to worry about. The students will actually <laughs> go to their advisor, and they will work with the advisor to find out if they can get credit for your business or not. Again, same with the, the unpaid. If they're getting practical experience towards their major, can they can usually get credit. And there's a lot of leeway there. Um, a lot of the students don't need credit or can't get credit. So it's always that question. Um, when we do get a position out there to the students, let's find out what students need. Let's, let's interview the students. Let's find out what they need. But if a student comes to you and says, yeah, I'd like to get this for credit, there's nothing that you have to go to an advisor or anything. The student goes to the advisor, tries to get that credit. Now, with paperwork and anything like that, the students may come to you and say, I need something signed once a week or every month saying, I'm here at this many hours. <coughs> That's about it. The students may have to write a journal, a weekly journal, mattering the major. Each school is different. Big thing of international students. If you've seen it or not, uh, Michigan State's huge uh, with international students, along with U of L, along with others. Our Chinese population has grown so large. Um, as I was telling Derek earlier, I co-taught a course last semester uh, a PR, uh, crisis management planning course, uh, 35 students uh, were in the class, 30 of them were from China. PR is big at Michigan State. But um, of course, you can take an international student. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with, with taking an international student. It comes into issues with if the student uh, is taking pay. It also comes into issues if they're taking a full-time position. That's when you have issues. Um, there's a lot more than that, but I want to let you know there's a lot of these students that are hungry for internships, have great experience, um, but uh, they can use the help also. So you see a lot more uh, students coming internationally too. Uh, frequent questions, and I threw these in there. The graduate students take internships. How many of you took, have took interns before? Your businesses right here. Anybody work with grad students? I'm seeing, and I'll show a little trend I'm seeing, the way the economy is, and I hate to say this to any parents too, I'm seeing a lot of post-graduate unpaid internships. Mm. It's weird and scary right now. The only positive I'll throw out of that is I'm seeing a lot of those 
turn into full-time positions. So if a student can hack it out, they're almost using that as anybody in the staffing world, and they're kind of using that as, as kind of a trial hire uh, in that. So I say that to the students and they get a little, oh, I gotta call my parents and say I'm taking a, I just graduated, I'm gonna take a postgraduate internship. It's happening. I mean, it really is. So, and what, why I say that to you guys too is just keep your eyes open for that because a lot of companies will come in and say, you know, I only want undergrads. I don't want undergrads. It'd be nice to grab some of these grad students because they're they, again, they are hungry. They're trying to find these positions. Students only take internships in the summer. No, that's our 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 biggest number. That's our, our number that, uh, that is the most, and uh, again, all over the country and the world. But we have students, and if you think about it, some students when they come in and uh, are taking one course at a time. So they have a ton of hours. They may be living here in Ann Arbor, going to Michigan State, coming back here, and then want something to do, want to get practical experience. So, um, no, the, we're, all throughout the year, students are living. With that, too, a lot of the students that you hire, especially if it's uh, uh, on a computer, they don't need to be sitting in, in your office. I get a lot of students that will be sitting in their pajamas, in their pajamas in their dorms or in their apartments. They can do so much just from, from being down there. So, so also think about that. I'm not going to answer this the best for you, but how many hours in a typical internship? It varies. It, it totally varies. Again, each school has their own set. It only gets into this when there is. If a student is wanting to get credit, then they have to have specific hours. Beyond that, it, it's pretty wide open. It's pretty wide open. That they can, um, it, it's kind of like defining an internship. If you were to Google internship right now, there's about a thousand definitions out there. If you think about it, an unpaid internship is volunteering the time. So it's actually volunteers. So um, I kind of answered that internships training in a full time position. Definitely. That's that's the main thing that's happening right now. And the, the students are, are changing their their ideas and ways. And obviously we are getting businesses coming and, and hiring full time students. But there's this this big change of uh, when students graduate, they're doing one of two things. Jumping right away and trying to get into their master's program or grabbing an internship or full-time position. But um, definitely they're turning into those. Um, trends that I'll say out there. A lot of, uh, I brought up a couple of trends, but um, there's a huge need right now especially for, for social media. Um, IT is, is huge right now. Um, and I'll be honest with you, at Michigan State, I would totally call us, a, um, and we're not a, a technical school at all, so we, we do have a lack of, of uh, higher end training, say developers, things like that. Um, but we do get calls from, from companies right out of Silicon Valley that we, we really hard to fill. I'll give a quick example too. Uh, uh, we had a company in, in Silicon Valley, and some of them are, are unique. Asked for a Ruby on Rails build. I don't know if anybody works with Ruby on Rails or is familiar with that. Um, higher end development, hard to find. And we had uh, one graduate student move back to the area that had the experience, and they wanted his resume, but they just wanted a picture, which was weird. So I didn't really, I didn't go along with that. I just connected with two of them and then went with them. They just said, send us a picture. Not of himself or anything, just send us a picture. So he sent a picture of himself and he had, he had a long mustache with a curly up mustache. And they flew him out there and interviewed for him. So it was one of the weirdest things, but again, with being unique and ideas, they were trying to figure out how this person was. Obviously he had the, the skills out to go along with that. But, um, I don't know, that was one of the weird ones. I put this up for, for two things. Um, 
so this semester for at Michigan State and for most everybody started this Monday. It's one of the weirdest times. Um, two years ago was one of the worst times. Um, not many jobs, not many, well there's a lot of internships, but most were unpaid. The students were kind of in, in limbo, didn't know what to do, they just kind of sitting tight. These last two days, three days now of the semester, have been the craziest times I've ever seen. And I don't know where that's coming from, but hopefully it's the, the boost of our economy. Also on the business end, all throughout the Christmas break, people were hiring nonstop. Which usually there's a, a pretty big wall um, in there. But um, we go through different times at the university, and it is weird coming from, I, I did come from corporate, uh, for me, I was at the, I'm at the university for four years, and I was a recruiter for seven years before this. Your times change with semesters, so it's, it's kind of weird. But we had December grads, and that's freak out time for them. They, freak, they need a job, they need to figure it out. The ones that realize that they didn't grab an internship realize they should have done something besides party the whole time they're at the university <laughs> and <laughs> figure out uh, that they need to get some practical experience. Um, but also, I've seen this huge uptick with businesses, locally, nationwide. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty, actually, pretty cool to see. Um, to me, it gets me excited about the economy. Hopefully, things are slowly coming back um, and going from there. I wanted to throw uh, that also in there with the ups and downs of state government, if you're a pro or not. Um, I've been speaking along with others. Uh, if anybody has seen the, the things that Governor Snyder's pushing out with the Mish Again program, I don't know if anybody has, has seen that. Um, I've been to, uh, we worked with uh, in Boston, DC, Chicago, Cincinnati. There was one in San Jose I didn't go to. But what we do is we go around promoting Michigan. So we go down and, uh, for example, in Cincinnati, uh, I spoke to a, a group at the Consumers Energy um, Aviation Center down there, which is a new place to, to go to. These were uh, mainly IT individuals, about 100 that were there. Speaking to them, letting them know all the great stuff that's going on in Michigan, inviting them back. I tell them all the time, I would love to be have a bus right here. Come on back. Good stuff's happening. The neat thing is when we're having networking and we're going around talking to everybody, sometimes at these events they'll come to you and say, oh my God, it's snow. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> there's just so much snow, you know. And, and I was, you know, pushed, we, what do we always say, that there are hills and there are these snow wheels and it's fun to us. It's cold, whatever, not this year, but um, <clears throat> it's coming, yes it is. But uh, they didn't say that at all in Cincinnati, which was weird. The number one thing that they were asking, um, and GE was hired by the Detroit area, they're asking, is it safe for their kids to live? I was, I was kind of blown away, and I told all of them there, and I told the state government that, and they were very interested in that. Um, obviously, we've been pushing the Pure Michigan ads, and uh, a lot of individuals don't understand Detroit, and then suburbs of Detroit, and, and we push all that. But it was interesting to me to hear that, that, you know, is it safe to have that? They all wanted to come. They wanted to come. So, again, getting hyped up and getting interested uh, about what's going on. Some great things coming. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I want to want to have as much questions as you can and, and directly connect you with whatever I can. Not just at Michigan State, with other universities, with with other people. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Also LinkedIn. Uh, use LinkedIn as much as I can, and that's another thing I can talk about also. But. Uh, any questions anybody have? Thanks, Paul. That was really informative. Um, I wonder if you have any thoughts on whether internships that are sort of, you go in and you work a certain number of hours a week versus kind of project internships where, you know, in my business I'm thinking about, hey, I really need somebody to help me just get this thing done. And it might fit well with an internship. Is that... Yeah, yeah, both both ways are, are fine. Um, I'm seeing more project type. They can still put that on their resume. 
I mean, it's something that they, they have to, that they want to put on a resume. I will throw out, um, one of the, the tougher parts that I have is helping play